Hi, welcome back to this tutorial series on creating and using procedural nanoparticles in Blender. In the previous tutorial, I gave a quick walkthrough of the nanoparticle asset available on Gumroad. If you missed that, click the link in the description box to go back over part one. In the second part, we're going to make the scene I used as the thumbnail of the part one video. The scene is technically very simple, so I'll focus more on stylistic direction and give some pointers about lighting and image composition. Full disclaimer though, I am not a professional artist, so all of these are just pointers based on what I like to do and are subject to personal taste. I will be using the Cycles render engine throughout. I'm a big fan of how it supports global illumination to light my objects, which is less simple to replicate in Eevee. If you do follow along in Eevee, no problem, but the result will look quite different. Also, please make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. To do so, come to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, search for Node Wrangler and select the checkbox. Now that's sorted, let's get cracking. I'll be working directly in the asset file. If you're starting from a fresh file with the nanoparticle, you might need to create a backdrop. Add a mesh plane, Tab into edit mode, select the back edge, press E then Z to extrude in the Z direction, select the original edge and Ctrl B to bevel. Scroll your mouse wheel to add some bevel subdivisions. Tab out of edit mode, right click and shade smooth. Press S to scale and rescale as needed. Come over to the materials tab and add a new material. With the default principle BSDF, set the color to white, and roughness to 0.3. I'm going to use spherical nanoparticles with a two-phase random composition. Let's make the atoms a little shinier so that they reflect light from the scene better. I'm going to drop the roughness down to 0.3 for each phase. The backdrop that comes with the asset scene is also too reflective, and I want to take out sharp reflections of any lights. Let's come over to its material settings and also increase its roughness to 0.3. Let's frame our shot around the first nanoparticle. With the render resolution kept at the default setting of 1920x1080, I'm going to position the camera so that the nanoparticle occupies roughly half of the image. One tip, you could move the camera using G to translate, but if the camera's position only needs small tweaks, I like to come to the camera properties and use the Shift X and Y settings. Guides can be useful for composing your image properly. To bring them up under camera properties, scroll down to viewport display, composition guides, and enable center. This splits the image into quadrants. Next, let's add some background nanoparticles. Click the existing nanoparticle, press Shift D to duplicate and G to translate. I'm going to lock the translation in either the X or Y axis by immediately pressing X or Y on the keyboard and keep the nanoparticles in the same plane as the backdrop. To make it look less obvious that I copy pasted them, I'll click each copy, press R twice to enable free rotation and rotate each nanoparticle just a bit. For the lighting, we're first going to add an HDRI to provide a base level of illumination to the scene. I'm going to use Brown Photo Studio 02, which I downloaded from Polyhaven. After downloading the EXR file, open the shader editor and come to the world settings. Click on the background node and hold down Ctrl T to add an environment texture node already connected to texture coordinate and mapping nodes. In the environment texture node, open the EXR you just downloaded and set the strength of the background node to 0.6. We'll be adding another light to the scene, so we don't want the world lighting by itself to be overpowering. If you zoom out in rendered view, you'll find the HDRI mapped out onto the world. There are windows in the scene, which act as the light source from the HDRI. Right now, these windows hit the nanoparticles with light face on, washing out some important shadows and features. Instead, I want this light to hit the nanoparticles from the left of the image, so let's rotate the HDRI about the Z-axis. 
Come to the mapping node and set the Z rotation to 87.5 degrees. With this, we get some specular highlights on the left-facing atoms accentuating their reflectiveness. It also creates a sense of light coming from the top left, which it is. I personally find this gives a bit more interest in the scene. The HDRI provides the basic lighting. We'll use a aerial light above the nanoparticles to further brighten the scene. Add an aerial light, scale it down to something smaller, move it up a bit, and make sure it is positioned roughly above the three nanoparticles. The default power of 10 watts is way too high, so let's bring it down. In the light properties, adjust the power to somewhere between 2 and 3 watts. The aerial light also illuminates the rear wall of the backplane, unifying the brightness of the floor and the back wall for an overall bright scene. White lights are okay, but they can create a cold feel, or here make things a bit dull. For this scene, I want something a bit warmer, so I'm going to add a slight orange tint to the light. At the moment, all three nanoparticles somewhat draw your attention. This makes the scene a bit busy and a little unsettling to look at. For this reason, I often add depth of field to the camera. To enable it, click on Camera Properties, scroll down and enable Depth of Field. To control the focal distance, I'm going to add an empty, rename it to Focus, and add it as the focus object. I want the front nanoparticle to be the focus of a viewer's attention. So let's bring the focus empty to align with the front nanoparticle. Tune the defocusing effect by toggling the f-stop. I'm going for quite an aggressive defocusing, so an f-stop of around 5 looks good for me. Let's now set up the render settings. Come over to the Render Properties, scroll down and open the Sampling section. Under Render, I have set the max samples to 500, with Denoise option also enabled. Depending on what your computer can handle, you may want to decrease the max samples if it seems like the render takes too long. And go to Render, Render Image to render out the final image. Once the render is complete, I'm going to add a subtle bloom effect in the compositor. Click on the compositor tab and make sure use nodes is checked. Open a new window and select the image editor. Click on the image selection button and select viewer node. In the compositor, you should have a render layers node that controls your rendered image connected to a composite node. Click on Render Layers and hit shift Control t to connect a viewer node. Hold down Shift and right mouse button and swipe the two connections between Render Layers and Composite and Viewer Nodes to connect them together with a node. Shift A and add a Glare node and drop it on the connection before the node. Select Fog Glow, High Quality, Threshold to 0.3 and size to 9. This should give a slight brightening bloom effect on the image. Hit render again. And there you have it, a simple nanoparticle scene. I hope this tutorial has been useful for you. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, leave a comment if you have any feedback and subscribe for more content. I'll hopefully be releasing more tutorials like this with some tips and tricks on creating scientific illustrations in Blender, so stay tuned. Bye bye for now and see you next time.